Let's speak there. President Buhari is uh, contending for the second time. It was the second term in office. What does, what does he have to say? The 72-page document, of course, a bit of that was abridged to make room for graphical illustrations. So we're putting that to you. President Buhari says he will, his administration, of course, is, is uh, uh, releasing a document which is titled, The Next Level, Good for the Common Man. And this document speaks to the financial market. The document highlighting the next level for jobs, infrastructure, and power. The document also reveals some new ideas, which are creation of a new people money bank and also a new day entrepreneurial bank, and also to fund on healthcare. Let's show you some of those uh, 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 presentations of the articles. And you can see a bit of that, that they're speaking to some of the stories. We talked about jobs, the government, the Buhari's administration intent to ramp up of what you call the next level for jobs in terms of jobs in agriculture, jobs in technology and creative areas, industrialization and jobs, and jobs in school feeding. The administration also spoke about the infrastructure, how to fund more in road, rail, and broadband, in broadband infrastructure for ICT. In the area of power, the government, the current administration wants to ramp up also on power generation, distribution, off-grid, and on-grid power, and energizing the market that will assure better power delivery to Nigerians. But we just talk about the People Money Bank. What does the Buhari's administration plan to do? The new bank, if set up, that will help the government to ramp up and put together what you call or consolidate what has been done under the trader money, the farmer money, and the market money, and also assist more Nigerians to be lifted out of poverty. The second bank, which President Buhari's administration plans to set up, is called the Entrepreneur Bank. This bank will provide debt and equity support for young entrepreneurs, provide them business planning a a strategy, which they don't have, and technology enable them. In summary, that's what both parties have said. So just try to get you a summary of that. You can read those documents as they are already available in the public domain. Now let's get the conversation started. Live to us from Abuja Studios is Professor Uche Waleke, who is a professor of capital market at the Nasarawa State University. He's also an economist and a financial analyst. Thank you, Professor. It's good to see you on the program this morning. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you, Professor. Uh, we've laid out in summary what the both, both parties are talking about. Now, reading their policy tea leaves before we get into the basics of the markets, whether they are the capital market, setting up a new bank, and all of that, some new banks, bigger pardon, and all that. What do you make of the broad this policy documents as we already have them in the public domain over the last four days between these two main challenges in the discourse for 2019 election? Yeah, thank you, Boasin. Um I see, well, uh, on the surface, they are good, but I see some missing pieces, um, you know, in both uh, documents. Um, if you take the one for article for example um, he, you know, he, he was talking about um, uh, you know what we will do policy objectives what we will do uh, without um, really uh, talking about how how to get those things done you know how we will do it that's what is missing in my view there and um, on the other side we also hear you know uh, where we were uh, where we are and where we are headed again, without emphasizing how do we, uh, um, you know, uh, get there. So the question of how is important in those two uh, documents, and they, they are missing. And that's why, why, why I said for me they are missing pieces. Um, they are good on the surface, but it's important to address the issue of uh, how we get there, the strategies, you know, to, to bring us there. Uh, the other issue is the assumptions uh, the two documents appear to be making. Uh, uh, the two documents appear to have been done under situations of certainty. Uh, when you say how we, we um, you know, uh, how, what we will do, okay, you appear to uh, assume a lot of things, that uh, those things are given. But of course we know that um, you are going to be operating under situations of um, uncertainty. None of the documents um, has uh, told us the possible threats to those, um, to those uh, plans and how those threats um, you know, are likely to be mitigated. So it's important to highlight the risks to the, the, the plans and how the government you know, expects to you know, uh, tackle them whenever they arise. You recall that um, 
the beautiful uh, policies we also had in, in uh, 2014, you know, 20, uh, prior to 2015, of this present ad administration, you know, you know uh, we are uh, more, more or less undermined by the recession that we had. Nobody, you know, uh, uh, you know, thought at that time that oil price was going to fall, you know, drastically fall, and that affected most of the, you know, programs that this administration, uh, you know, had for the first time. So I also expect that in the two documents, there, there, there should be um, uh, a kind of um, risk assessment, a kind of uh, identification of threats to these plans. And in the event of this threat, this is how we intend to mit mitigate them. Uh, but take, for example, uh, the issue of um, oil price. The economy remains monoproduct, and the diversification of the economy we know will take uh, you know, uh, quite yes. some time. Uh, uh, professor, just a quick, uh, professor, about. So professor let, I'll, I'll allow me to just uh, okay. I'll cut in very quickly. Yeah. Professor, Professor, please allow me to cut in here because uh, we're trying to manage the time we have to have a very robust conversation, so we'll try to cut in a little bit of that. So please, please permit me uh, to do that. Let's go straight to the Buhari's policy document on the next level where, where he talked about the jobs, infrastructure, and uh, power sector. If we take these uh, views together, what we already have in this document, uh, what is the need for you? Uh, let's deal with what we know and leave a little bit what we don't know. Yes, uh, uh, let's, let, let me even start with the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the article plan, the one that talks about um, the, fi the financial sector. The first thing there you notice is um, uh, the, uh, the plan to bring about financial system um, uh, stability. And one of the points uh, that um, is noted in that plan is that um, monetary policy you know, has failed to support uh, uh, the growth in the, in the country. Uh, the plan hopes to uh, bring about low exchange rates, low interest rates, and low, in, you know, inflation rates. And um, I wonder how that, um, again, that brings me to the question of how, how that um, is, is going to come about. Low interest rates, stable exchange rates, low inflation rates, given the fact that, again, we remain susceptible to, uh, you know, shocks um, in the, particularly in the, in the, you know, oil, uh, uh, from coming from the oil sector. So okay. how will that happen again? If you, uh, uh, on the one hand, you are talking about um, uh, stability in exchange rates, low inflation, low interest rates. On the other hand, you are talking about liberalizing the downstream sector of the... Of the, of the uh, 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 Professor, uh, let's, let's, take a quick, let's take a quick break at this point. Professor Uche Waleke, we need to take a break at this point. We'll be right back to this conversation. Please stand. <laughs> 